anymore. Man, I could do that all day. Amen. There's something about praise. There's something about worship that uh, that makes you feel better. And the Bible says he inhabit those who praise him. And when you don't have an answer, you know what to do. When there isn't anything that you can do to resolve the stress and depression, give him a praise. For the victory is in the praise. Hallelujah. We're together again, assembled in this place, this hallowed place that's called for his name, and we honor you all in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we count it joy and a victory to see you in this place worshiping and magnifying the Lord. Of course, the Bible tells us, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. We are coming very close to the end of 2021 and look at the experiences that we have had in 2021. But the Lord has kept us. He continues to bless us for every lasting promises. He provides everlasting protection. And for everlasting protection, there is everlasting provision. And that's what the Lord has done for us and through us. We're going to prepare ourselves and prepare our minds for the word of the Lord coming from our very own uh, Pastor uh, Findus, eligible and, and very capable of presenting the gospel. And we are delighted in this house that we have ministers and pastors that can illuminate the word of the Lord and have a word of, from the Lord to give to this congregation. And we thank God for the, those that uh, apostolate postulate the word, presenting the gospel in such a way that it can be uh, presented and accepted. Uh, we're so thankful for this wonderful praise team, anointed. I felt the worship.
on your report card. I just want you to stand at this time. And we want to recognize every academic student. I want to recognize all students. And we're grateful for your accomplishments. But for those who have A's and B's, and last semester you were on the honor roll in college, I want you to stand right now. Just stand. If you have honor roll.
just so grateful and the young sister, sister uh, Bates, who's at the James Madison Uni University and doing such a superlative job and <clears throat> adjusting to a major Division I, R1 university and being away from home, certainly Pastor Bates and Mother Bates have taught her well. And that uh, she is doing reasonably well. She had. 
has her family, but she has a church family. And please know, Janelle, we are supporting you. And um, you have, uh, you're doing something that is phenomenal and is critical in times like this, these that we're witnessing, that we can, it's easy to talk about all of the issues and all of the problems. Everything is wrong, this is wrong, this is not right. It's different when you can roll up your sleeves and say, instead of uh, focusing on the problems, that you become a part of the solution. Amen. And that's what the crystal should be. Amen. Not a part of the problem, in the problem, but that we become solution driven. We become solution driven. Amen. And uh, I see uh, I see great, I see great things. Please pray for our leadership in the school district as we received such the, the discouraging news that our superintendent will be leaving us as of next week. And so in your deliberations uh, this month, and particularly next week, remember Buckingham Public Schools, that the Lord would keep his hands on our school district, that the Lord would provide the leadership that is necessary to take us through the remainder of this academic year, and that uh, the school board and faculty and staff would find the appropriate person to uh, replace one of the things that I've noticed that is that all of us are replaceable, but there are some of us that are indispensable. All of us can be replaced, but there are some people that are just indispensable. And so, would you please pray with me and that the Lord will keep his hand on our government local state and regional, and even at the federal level, we sure do need prayer. And it seems, it appears that uh, um, we've been ripped apart um, and we've become so axiom, um, left against the right, rich against the poor, black against white, uh, racial issues, disparities. But we need to preach love. We need to preach reconciliation in Christ. There is no reconciliation unless that reconciliation is focused on Jesus. And will you do that, please? And, uh, will you do that? And um, I, I, the last thing, and then we're going to turn this message over to uh, this pulpit over to uh, Pastor Fenderson. Uh, on the uh, 18th, the 19th, and 20th of November, uh, for the first time, the Virginia Western Diocese, in which um, I've been blessed uh, to preside and to work with these 15 churches throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, will be convening here, um, particularly on the 20th, uh, that is that Saturday. You're going to be receiving information in terms of the 18th and the 19th. It will be virtual via Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube, and we'll provide the connect. I want uh, you to be um, a participant virtually and also face to face. I'm encouraging you. The Lord has made a transition that the Crystal Cathedral now becomes the flagship of the Virginia Western Diocese and the Churches of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is something because for nearly 40 years, the flagship has been Refuge Temple. Many of you know 
and with the passing of uh, Thurman Hargrove Sr., um, that mantle has been placed on this ministry, not just me alone, but this ministry. And so on the 20th, uh, we will be convening here and we'll have uh, uh, a worship service, truly a worship service. And this praise team that you've seen will be uh, praising and we've asked all of the churches to come together uh, on that day for a worship and reconciliation. It will be the first time, literally, uh, in about a year and a half, that the churches uh, within the hour uh, Reformation have physically come together. And so I'm asking you, please, please, uh, be here as it were a worship service on Saturday morning. That service starts at 12 noon. But just be in place at least by 11, 11.30. Let's be in place. Let's greet um, and let's host with a uh, spirit of, of fellowship and kindness as there is a coronation of shifting the flagship from Refuge Temple to the Crystal Cathedral. And we need we do need uh, your help. And this last announcement, and um, please note, and you are cer certainly uh, invited if you go to Cool JC Facebook, CoolJC.org, C O O L J C.org, or if you go to Cool JC YouTube. Um, I will be hosting a international television broadcast on tomorrow um, throughout the world, throughout the country. It will be virtual, and you'll, you're able to see that virtual conversation um, either through Facebook or YouTube, and just simply go to coojc.org, and you are invited to join us at 7 p.m as we deal and tackle the issue of discipleship during the COVID, uh, trans-COVID season. And we're thankful for the opportunity um, to present uh, the gospel or and to host a seminar regarding discipleship, which is going to be broadcast um, to at least six continents and all of the United States of America. And God, again, has been gracious, and he has been merciful. You are free. Just go to the sites, and that service starts at 7 o'clock. How many of you enjoyed Charles Becker on last Sunday? Oh. so hard he turned red. I just, I wanted to do some assaults, but I was just simply amazed at how the Lord used him. And God uses you, but it's nothing like having to stand up and to present the gospel. Um, and that pressure and eyes are on you, but we are thankful for uh, his ability to expositate the word of the Lord with great skill and anointing. And we give that praise and the glory to the Lord for allowing him to be an example. Um, Mark Fittison is not a stranger. Um, he is not a son of mine. He is my brother. And so we have a different relationship with many of you because we were birthed out of the same ministry just at a different time. And he is my brother and is very anointed and gifted and crafted in the word, in the word of the Lord. And when you hear him and see him, there is a reflection, of course, of Christ, but it's also a reflection and an extension of Dr. Thurman Harbour and his
his ability to teach and to present the, the Word of God soundly, succinctly, and with an anointing. about this. Let's do communion and then let this Brunswick tornado loose on you. Um, if, if musicians, if you could just give me a sweet melody, please, um, as we prepare ourselves at least to take our communion. If you remember last month, we did not do communion, but the Lord has kept us. I knew Please forgive me, Sister Holman. It's just so good to see you. Sister Holman had walking pneumonia. And the Lord has touched you and, and healed you. And it's so good to see you. It's good to see that the Lord has touched your body. Um, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
It's like a start over. Hallelujah. And there's power in communion. There's power within you, power on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come, we remember what you did for us. The awesome price for our freedom. It cost you your life as you submitted to the cross. It became the propitiation, the substitute for us. Today we thank you. Forgive us of our sins. Wash our mind. If there's malice, if there's hardness, unforgiveness,
And are you glad that you're here? In Jesus' name, bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God says, where two or three are gathered together in my name. He said, there I am in the midst of them. And since that there are more than two or three here, we might as well praise the Lord. Amen. Which means simply, so be it. Giving honor first to the Spirit of Christ, to Jesus God, who came in the flesh to redeem all mankind. I honor him this morning, not because I deserve to be here. No, no, no. I don't stand in self-righteousness. I stand by the mercy and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving honor also to the said man of this house, my pastor, my leader, my big brother, even though I might outweigh him by a few pounds, Bishop Dr. Maurice Carter, and also honoring in absentia, Mother Deborah Carter, in the name of the Lord. If you have good leaders, you are most blessed. And we have good and great leaders here in the name of the Lord. Amen, amen. This is not a house where there are big eyes and little U's. Everybody is somebody and Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. One of the things that is very important to note is that when you're at home, you can be yourself. And since you're at home, you might as well be yourself. Isn't that right? One of the things that is so important to recognize is that when you're home, you're in a place of safety, security, and identity. It is in home or at home that you develop knowledge, which is information, wisdom, which is the application of that information, and understanding, which is the culmination of comprehension of the things you have learned and experience. The beautiful thing about the Lord is that wherever you are at, at the knowledge level, at the wisdom level, or at the uh, understanding level, the Lord is well able to slip in the revelation no matter where you are. You see, God is not a dumb God, all right? God is the smartest entity that who has ever been and who will ever be. And when you access God through the power of the Holy Ghost, you access divine intelligence. Someone say divine intelligence. See, it's one thing to have book knowledge. It's another thing to have book knowledge with the knowledge of the eternal. And what the enemy wants to do, he wants to try and stop us from praising and worshiping God. Hear me and hear me well. Praise is for war. Let me say that again. Wrap your mind around that for a minute. Praise is for war. When Jacob or Israel was leaning on his staff, blind as a bat, ready to die, he looked at Judah and said, Judah, you are a lion's well. And Judah means praise from the Hebraic term Yehuda, which means praise. Then he goes on to say, your hand shall be in the neck of an enemy, the neck of your enemy, which means when you praise God, you suffocate the enemy that's trying to take you out. That's why the devil don't want you to praise God. He wants you to complain and walk in fear and walk in shame and walk in breath. But you need to tell that punk he is a liar. Amen. Yeah, I said it in a minute. Because this is the thing you have to understand. And I'm going to get into the word. Because you are alive, you have a future. That's number one. Not only do you have a future, God believes in your future because he gave it to you. The proof that the devil believes in your future because he fights you. Friends bring comfort and growth, but enemies bring rewards. So if you've got an enemy, you should be rejoicing right about now. Amen, somebody. Because whenever God wants to give you a reward, he places an enemy in your path. And you've got to learn how to enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey in defeating your enemies. Sometimes that enemy is an enemy inside of me. Mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Or is it just me? Hallelujah. Paul said it this way, the good that I would do, I find myself not doing. And the evil that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. 
And then he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Paul had the equivalent of three PhDs, but yet he had to struggle at times within his being. The Bible tells us, as Christ hath suffered in the flesh, mm, arm yourself likewise. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. And whether you know it or not, sin is your enemy. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory over the enemy called sin. Truly be honored the Lord today and not going to be before you long. As we would say in Brooklyn, I'm not going to be before you long, but I intend to be strong. Is that all right? Amen. Let's look at Malachi chapter 4, Luke chapter 15, two familiar passages in the Word of God that we are going to uh, delve into for a few minutes. And the purpose plainly is this, to glorify God and to edify or encourage you on this day. Not just those of you that are here organically, but those who are also online, with his Facebook, YouTube, at a later predetermined time, Marco Polo, or whatever device you are receiving this broadcast on. We salute you also in the mighty name of the Most High God, who we call the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's take a look at Malachi chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verses 5 and 6. Those of you who can't stand, you don't have to sit this time, all right? If you can't stand, stay where you are as well. We're going to read Matthew. I'm going to read it to you in your hearing. If you want to stand, you can. Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. And it says, See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the father, lest I strike the earth with a curse. Amen, someone. And also coming from Luke chapter 15, I'm just going to give you mm, a portion of it to start with. We may scatter plot the rest of the text. Is that all right? So we're going to look at Luke chapter uh, 15, verses 11 through 13. Let's take a look at that. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 15, verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. This is Jesus speaking, I believe. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto them his lips. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. Remember the term far country, we're going to deal with that. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him to his fields to feed swine, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk of the swine, that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he had come to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and perish with hunger, and no more worthy to be called, excuse me, let me back up, and I perish with hunger, I will arise and go to my father, and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy servants. Before you take your seat, I'm going to leave a thought with you, and we're going to pray. It's time to come home. The Father is waiting for you. It's time to come home. The Father is waiting for you. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, your faithfulness, and your patience toward us. Lord, we are not worthy of what you have done for us, to us, and through us. But we bless your name right now, because in you there is no failure. Forgive us of any and all infractions of your will in word, deed, thought, attitude, motivation, and agenda. Help us, O oh God, to see through your eyes, hear through your ears, and to speak your words, and to feel through your heart. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice today, whether it be virtual or here in the temple. Bless the manservant of his house and his wife, the leadership 
and oh God, the mothers and the fathers, all the way down to the babies. Lord, bless the friends and the families that are here. Bless those who are part of the body of Christ here and worldwide. We block the hand of the enemy. We bind him up right now in the name of Jesus, that Satan will have no rule in this place, in our lives, or in our ability to hear and to comprehend your word. Speak, O oh God, hide me in you so they may hear and see you and not me that you may be glorified. Touch someone today, deliver, save, and heal like only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. When the people of God said amen, you may be seated in the name of the Most High God. It's time to come home. When we think of the concept of the term home, home has many different meanings. It's not just a physical place. It is also a place of the heart and the mind. As I just before stated, home can mean different things to different people. Many of us have fond memories of growing up experiencing the blessings of life, the lessons of life, saturated with love and with care. However, some of us did not have that experience. Some of us experienced abuse, neglect, rejection, and great pain. No matter which experience was yours, it's still God's will to give you a home, to give you a place where you can be safe at all times and give and receive love as God has ordained. Amen, someone. It's interesting to know that, and I don't know if Bishop knew this or not, he got into some of my message, and that's okay. That's just confirmation. One of the things the Lord began to deal with me about was the signs of the times. The times and the seasons that we are in. The word time is delineated between two words. One word is chronos. The word chronos speaks to a determined measured interval in which something happens or occurs. And a distinct definite period where something is designed or ordained to occur is called kairos. Someone say kairos. That's when the time has reached a point where it must come to pass. One concept of time is general and linear. The other concept of time is specific and definite. And what the enemy wants to do, he wants to keep us from recognizing the fact that there is a specific and definite time for God to move on our behalf. This is how you know you're close to getting something from God when you fought tooth and nail. Amen, someone. When it seems like your mind is flooded by things that make no sense. Amen, someone. Amen. When a spirit of depression tries to come upon you to turn you back, you're closer than you have ever been before in many cases. See, here is the thing. We must expose the plan or the methodia of the enemy. When you are close, you see, you can't uh, receive from God without believing. And the devil knows that. So the devil comes to destabilize your faith. Right. You see, the devil really can't curse you. So he sets up agendas and enigmas and plots and plans and schemes in the hopes that you will curse yourself. Amen. Here's an example of someone cursing himself. Oh, I just can't. I've had enough, and I'm using these as quotes, okay? Uh, God don't love me. Here's the biggie, what's the use? What's the use? And so the devil speaks to your mind. He drops mortar, he drops brick, why? To build a stronghold to keep you from seeing a cross that the glory of God is before you. It's very important to recognize what is fighting against you. Is it incidental? Did you walk into something? Is it uh, impartational? Did someone give it to you? Or is it generational? Did it come through your bloodline? You've got to recognize the demon you're fighting against. Amen. Two biblical examples of that. When David took the bread and the cheese and the milk to his brothers on the front line, he sees Goliath ranting and raving and cursing the God of Israel. David asked a question, who is this uncircumcised Philistine 
He wanted to know the name of the demon that they were fighting against. When Jesus, in the book of Mark, dealt with uh, a man that was in uh, uh, the Gadarenes, he asked a question, what is your name? You got to know the name of the enemy because a name denotes character. Amen, someone. That's why you got to be careful what you name your kids. Amen, somebody. Be careful what you name your kids. Because they can turn out to live out that which you name them that's not positive. And so here's the thing. Season speaks to a fitting opportunity from the Greek word eukaios which means opportunity, a season, a period of change. Is that not what our bishop just said a moment ago? We are stepping into a season of change. Never fear change. Never fear the future. And never fear that God won't love you. Amen, someone. Some of us have esteem issues. We question whether or not God loves us. Because we look at other people and we see how blessed they are. And then the devil whispers in your ear, if God loved you, you'd be blessed like that. But can I break it down to you? Everybody that is blessed ain't blessed by God. The devil will give you blessings too. The only difference is he'll kill you when you try and get away from it. Amen, somebody. Don't make the mistake of thinking just because a person has more things, they have more God. The devil is alive. God is not against you having things. God is against things having you. And if you can have the thing and the thing not have you, God will give it to you at the appointed time. Amen. Somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, in every season, there is a spirit that appears. The theologians call it the zeitgeist. Someone say zeitgeist. The zeitgeist is the spirit of the age. Every season has one. The spirit of this age is do whatever you want as long as it feels good. No standards. Mm. Lawlessness. As long as you don't hurt nobody and you're an adult, you can do it. But always remember, Sin may be personal, but it's never private. Mm. What are you saying, preacher? Especially if you are a parent or a grandparent. The sin you do that you don't repent of, you open a door for your children to get attacked. I ain't gonna get a whole lot of amens on that one. Amen. So if you are a parent, that should be a built-in motivation to live for God. Because you're setting your children up to be hurt, to be attacked, to be abused, potentially. Amen. Mm. One of the biggest problems in America, in Western society, is the problem of fatherlessness. We know most of the statistics. I'm not going to go in and, and, and get into that. But in this particular case, in Luke chapter 15, fatherlessness was not the issue. Do you know why fathers are so important? And mothers are also, and you all are important too. So this is not to delineate or to say anything against mothers because I love mothers. Mothers, most mothers are good mothers. You got a few crazies out there, but the majority of mothers are good mothers. Okay. But the reason why the devil hates fathers, there are four things a father does or a father figure. A father establishes order, number one. A father maintains order, number two. A father demands order, number three. And number four, a father restores order. Establish, maintain, demand, and restore. And we're going to see that in this Luke 15 narrative, how that plays out with the father. Most of you all know the story. Man has two sons which we've read already in Luke 15. He has an older son and a younger son. The younger son is motivated by greed because he wants something from his father before time. See, that's what being a prodigal is. 
prodigal is to be gifted before your maturity catches up with your giftedness. Okay. This is a big problem, especially if there is no father to establish order. Amen, Walls. You must have a father or a father figure to establish order. Mothers, as awesome as you all are, as spiritual as you all are, as amazing as you all are, God still intends for a father or a father figure to be in that child's life. Because without the father, you're going into play checkers in a chess match. You go into a gunfight with a knife. It works close up, but it doesn't work from a distance. That's why God ordained the fathers. Patea, Padre, Father, Source, Foundation. The disciples said that the foundations be removed, where shall we go? Fathers. And in this story, the father is the hero. Not the son that left. Amen, somebody. You may not shout off of this, but it's going to bless you, okay? Fathers. Some of us are missing blessings because we hate our fathers. I'm going to sing it again. Some of us are sick because we hate our fathers. Amen. You better let that stuff go. Amen. Amen, someone. You want to be free, right? Amen. Make peace with your daddy issues. And I'm going to show you why it's so important. The father asks, or the son asks for the gifting of the father. Do you not know that that was an insult to ask his dad for his inheritance before he died? How do we know this? According to Deuteronomy chapter 21, the father had the right to kill his son for asking that. Read it for yourself. Deuteronomy 21, verses 18 through 21. He had the authority to take his life. But what did he do? He blessed them anyway. Because a good father wants to bless their children even when they act crazy. This boy was acting crazy. Okay? He was gifted before he had enough maturity to handle it. What is maturity? Discipline plus accountability plus time. That's maturity. Discipline plus accountability plus time. Amen, somebody? And so now, he takes his inheritance and he goes to another country. Do you remember in the book of Genesis, after Adam sinned, God asked Adam, where are you? Adam went to another country. Sin is another country. God took, or Adam took God to a place that he had never experienced before. Because the connection was broken. Well, you may say, well, God sees everything, yes. But when he asked Adam, where are you? He was talking spiritually. Amen, someone. Amen. And when Adam broke the connection, he went into sin consciousness. What is sin consciousness? Fear. Shame and hiding. Isn't that what we do? Isn't that what we've done, rather, with our own parents? When we've done wrong, we get scared. We feel ashamed, and then we go somewhere to hide. You don't have to operate in fear, shame, and hiding when God has given you the authority to operate in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Why settle for fear, shame, and hiding when you can have righteousness? which is God's standard and how he sees you in light of his blood and repentance and peace. Righteousness leads to peace. And when you put righteousness and peace together, the end result is joy. Can someone give the Lord a hand praise for that?
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm, thank you, Lord. But you got to remember, it's not just righteousness, peace, and joy in yourself. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So here's the thing. He's out there in another country. He's out from under the umbrella or the jurisdiction of his father. Now, the scripture doesn't say this specifically, but if this man is a holy man and a righteous man, which he appears to be, the only way he could stay connected to his son was through prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I submit to you that when you run out from the house, you run out from the protection of God. And when I say the house, I'm talking about the house of God. You run out from under the protection. And so guess what happens? God has people praying for you. Your pastor, your mother, other leaders, mothers and fathers in that local assembly or who may not even know you praying that God will cover you till you and I have learned how to come to our self. Amen, someone. You see, his lack of of discipline became his undoing. The question for the day for all of us, what area do we lack discipline in in our life? Because that's the area the devil is going to attack to try to get a foothold in your life. Or am I the only witness? We have to take self-assessment sometimes, y'all. Amen, someone. Because it's so easy to look at other folk and what they do wrong. Amen. And not put the mirror in front of our own self. Amen. One of the first signs of error is that you see everybody else's fault and you have none. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, even the kid. Amen, someone. So he comes to himself. Why does he come to himself? Because not only has he lost all of his money, he's went from becoming a party animal to being called a desperate dog. Amen? Now, he connects himself to a dude. He connects himself to someone that's not there to help him. Matter of fact, he goes down further. Now he's feeding pigs. Pigs are unclean animals. Not only is he feeding pigs out of desperation, he's actually fighting them for their slop. You see, this is the challenge with sin. Sin will take you further than you want to go. Amen, Amen someone. Amen. And part of the problem is, a lot of times, we just want to hear God is love, and he is love. But he loves us so much, he wants us to come out of stuff. And stay out of stuff. You see, the son that left was obviously backslidden. But the son that stayed was too. Amen, somebody. How do we know this? When you read further in the text, the oldest son gets jealous of the younger son. And this is a problem in the body of Christ. When folk come back to the Lord, don't pre-qualify them. I'm going to give you five steps on what to do when people come back to the Lord or come to the Lord. The Father gives a template on how to receive folk who have left God or who have never been in God a day in their life. He gives a template. Now, the Father never gives up on him. You know why? Because he was looking for him. See, a good parent look for you. They keep their eyes open for you. Amen, someone. Amen. 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 Why is that important? Because a father, no matter how big you get, you never outgrow the need for a blessing from a father. I'm going to say that again, especially to you, you young folk who think, you know, you get a little education, you get a piece of money, you get big. I don't need my mom and my daddy no more. You never stop. Guess what? You never get to the point, rather, where you don't need your mother or father's blessing. He comes to himself and says this. Wow. 
My service back home, or my daddy's service rather, gets fed and clothed and compensated better than I am now. He said, now will I go to my father and say, Father, I'm not even worthy to be called your son. He went back home, but he didn't just go back home physically. He went back home in his mind. He went back home in his mind before he went back home physically. The oldest brother, he was obedient, but he wasn't willing. What are you saying? The oldest brother, deep down, wished he had the guts to do what the younger one did. Because it showed in his anger and jealousy toward his younger brother. Father tells him, everything I have is yours. Remember, the oldest brother gets the what? Double portion. So what was he complaining about? It was his insecurity and it was his jealousy. You see, he was backslidden. And here are some things to consider to know if you're on uh, that road, if you will. You stop caring about the things of God. This, these are indicators of a backslidden state. You stop caring about the things of God. The world now all of a sudden has a greater impact in your life. Amen, someone. You stop praying. You stop fasting. You stop reading your word. You stop treating people right. The things that you used to do that God delivered you from, or am I the only one that's ever been there? They found a way of coming back. Amen, someone. Amen. And so guess what happens? You begin to drift. The current of the world pulls you away from the shoreline where God is. We call it drift today. They used to call it backsliding. Same thing. And so what God is saying here in this lesson, don't drift. Amen, someone. Don't drift. Don't use your weakness as an excuse to walk away from God. That's a word for someone right there. Amen, someone. Don't use your excuse as a reason to leave God as good as God has been to you. Or maybe should I make it more plain? As good as God has been to me. Yes. Amen, someone. Amen. Think of all the times that God has covered us yes. when we were wrong. Not when we were right. When we were wrong. Amen. When we made mistakes. In some cases, it wasn't a mistake for me. It was deliberate. And God covered me and didn't allow me to be destroyed. Deliver us from religious spirits who act like they've never done anything wrong and don't have compassion for nobody else. And here's another way you know a person's in a backslidden state. They start looking their nose down at folk. Ooh. You better check it. Amen, someone. The good thing about God, he says, come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Some people break down because they're under so much pressure, and they don't know where to turn. Everybody ain't on to take, yo. There are folks who have weaknesses and don't know where to turn, and they should be able to turn to us, who know what it's like to struggle. Amen, someone? Who know how to pray, who know how to cover them, and not put their business in the street like Fox News Live or CNN or Reuters News. Mm -hmm. The father never gives up on the son. He corrects the one in the house. But let's see what he does to the one that comes back. The first thing is he acknowledges him. You know how some of us are. We see folk that we used to know. And they may not be connected like they used to be. And we see them in the store. We see them down the aisle. We run and go to the other aisle. Don't do that. Amen. He acknowledges his son. Then he receives his son. Just because someone acknowledges you don't mean that they receive you. Amen, somebody. He receives his son. The third thing he does, he embraces his son. Ooh. 
See, a person can acknowledge you and receive you in their presence and go, come no further. Stand right there. You hear me, buddy? But he embraces his son. The fourth thing he does, because you got to get this, just because someone embraces you don't mean they love you. Some folk will embrace you to put on airs like they really love you and they don't. Had it happened to me? And I'm sure I'm not the only one. But he loves his son. And his own other son, the older brother, criticized his daddy for loving his son. That's just like some of us in the church. Oh, can I go there? Someone come back to the Lord and you don't like how the pastor deal with that? Well, I think the pastor should do so and so and so. You're not the pastor. Have a seat and be quiet. Amen. Of that. Because God has put the pastor, the set man, on an assignment. Thank you. On an assignment to love everyone. And God gives the pastor the wisdom to deal with everyone. Can I give an example? Give me five more minutes and I'll be done. I remember when we were back at the home church and I saw how my father in the gospel, Bishop Harbor, would deal with folk and I would be like, Pop, that's all you're going to do? This is what he said to me. He said, when you get in my seat, you'll understand. Until then, cut it. That's what he told me. Cut it. So when I began to pastor out in the Martinsville area, Guess what? After two years, the light bulb came on and I gave him a call. I said, Bishop, I got it now. But that took, what, 12 years, 15 years to get it. He loves his son. And the last thing, and this is the important part too, he restores his son. See, there's a difference between just being healed and restored. Healing stops disease. Healing stops trauma. Healing stops the pain. But restoration brings you back to the place where you were before the pain ever stopped. Hallelujah. God is not just a healer. He is a restorer. Is there a witness in the house? I said he's a restorer. important to understand that whatever was restored already had value. You can't restore something that has no value. Amen, someone. You can attempt to restore it, but you can't restore something that doesn't have value. Amen, someone. You take a hundred dollar bill, throw it in the mud and step on it and pick it back up. Did his value change? His appearance changed, but his value did not. As with money, so with people. If people are in the mud, if people have been broken, their value hasn't changed, just their appearance. Mm. Amen, someone. That's why you shouldn't look your nose down at anybody. Because more times than not, God will put a miracle in someone beside you that you don't even know, may not even like, or probably don't even trust. Come on. That's why it pays to treat everybody right. Amen. Because you never know where your blessing is coming from. Amen. And you never know who you need to bless. Amen. And the ability to have relationship gives you access to blessings to and fro. And so this father brings his son back. He restores him. I don't see anywhere where the father went in front of his servants and said, Hey, y'all, my son did this, my son did that. Okay, I'm letting him come back in. He didn't ask for permission. And he didn't give a blow-by-blow -blow commentary. What am I saying? Sometimes some things are none of our business. Amen, somebody. I know it's a tight word, I know. I know. But it's good teaching. It's the truth. You see, you are who your father says you are. There are three fathers you need in your life. The Heavenly Father. Yes. Your birth father or father figure if he's no longer around. And your father in the gospel. You need all three. 
Now, the devil will tell you, I don't need none of them. I'm grown. I'm 21 plus. You're being deceived. You need fathers. Your children need fathers. The nation needs fathers. It's time to come home. Some of you who are listening to this broadcast, you used to be in God. You left God. Either the fall of the world, or you were hurt by someone in the church, or you were just going through a whole lot of stuff. Guess what? It's time to come home. In your mind, in your heart, and to the body of Christ. Why wait? Aren't you tired of going around in circles? Aren't you tired of having to do it by yourself? Aren't you tired of being disconnected from the move and the power and the might of God? Aren't you tired from operating, operating on the mercy side of God and not the grace side? Amen. It's time to come home. All the way home. Bring it all. Every care, every sin, every weakness, every fear, every complaint, every heartache, every disappointment. Bring it to God. And leave it there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to come home. The Father is waiting for you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Free to leave 
remember your offering for today is at the door, of course, and for the brethren, of course, uh, you received the Marco Polo. We've got a short brotherhood meeting. Thank you so much. Um, the camera person, our brother Becker, man, what a splendid job. My Puerto Rican brother, you're doing a great God bless you. In Jesus' name, go in peace.